A large number of Latvians resisted the occupation of Latvia by Nazi Germany. The Latvian resistance movement was divided between the pro-independence units under the Latvian Central Council and the pro-Soviet units under the central staff of the partisan movement in Moscow. Around 22,000 deserted both from the Red Army and German Army during 1943–45 in Latvia. Dogovpils was the scene of fierce Jewish resistance during the Holocaust. Many local Latvians were actively involved in the resistance movement against the ethnic policies of the German occupation regime. Zanis Lipke risked his life to save more than 50 Jews. 134 Latvians later have been honored with the title Righteous Among the Nations. <laughs> <laughs> National resistance movements Civic circles in Latvia were dissatisfied with the German occupation regime and secretly plotted to reinstate democracy. There were many small underground groups of the national resistance movements focused on the restoration of the independence of Latvia like the Latvian Nationalist Union, Latvian National Council, the Officer Union, organizations the Latvian Guards, New Regiments, the Free Latvia, the Latvian Hawk Organization and others. The radical nationalist organization Thundercross was allied with the Germans in the first months after the invasion, however when repressed by the Germans it again started underground resistance. On August 13, 1943 members of four biggest Latvian political parties founded the Latvian Central Council. It published the outlawed publications Jana Latvija New Latvia and Nietkariga Latvija Independent Latvia. The periodicals propagated the idea of renewing democracy in Latvia after the war. Karelians The Latvian Central Council managed to form their own military unit, disguised as a home guard unit, commanded by General Janis Karelis. The men were popularly known as Karelians Latvian, Kareliesi. The unit was organized in July 28, 1944 by a directive from Vi, the administrator of Riga Township, for the officially avowed purpose of fighting Soviet partisans who had recently been dropped by parachutes in great numbers, and for the formation of German-supported Latvian partisan groups which would operate in Soviet-occupied Latvian regions. The size of the Karelians is uncertain. Estimates range from 1,200 to 16,000, while the Germans were told that the group had only 500 men. Volunteers were attracted by word of mouth. The Karelians expected ultimately to fight both Soviets and Nazis and to remain in Latvia as nationalist partisans if the Germans withdrew, or even to hold a part of Latvia until help arrived from the Western Allies. On September 23 the Karelians retreated through Riga to northern Courland, leaving behind a group of 150 men to operate in the Soviet rear. The Karelians assisted the Latvian Central Council boat actions to Sweden and established radio contacts with Sweden. On November 14, the Germans surrounded and disarmed the Karelians. Seven of their officers, including Upelniks, the member of the military committee of the underground Latvian Central Council, were sentenced to death by a Nazi military tribunal and shot in Liepāja on November 19. A Karelian battalion commanded by Lieutenant Rubinis fought the Germans for three days and was annihilated. Rubinis fell during a Latvian counterattack trying to break through the German encirclement, but some of the Karelians escaped. General Karelis was deported to Germany. 545 of his men were sent to the Stutthof concentration camp. <laughs> Soviet partisans Armed combat behind the German front lines was carried out by the soldiers of the Red Army units, Latvian riflemen Soviet divisions and people guards. Activity picked up in 1942, one year after the First Winter War, but real work by the partisans in Latvia started only in 1943 after the German Army Group B stalled at Stalingrad and Kursk. The partisan regiment, was organized and started training in June 1942 in Leningrad, and from Staraya Rusa three small Latvian partisan units about 200 men headed for Latvia. On July 7 the regiment reached the Latvian Karsava region, but there the Germans found and dispersed them with great losses and only several partisans escaped. The next partisan unit was formed in September 1942 by Moscow from volunteers from 201st Latvian Rifleman Division and the Latvian Partisan Regiment. Par Padamju Latviju. The commander was Villa Samsons. This partisan regiment began fighting east of the Latvian border and only in the winter of 1943 did it start to fight in Latvia. 
In March this unit was renamed as the Latvian Partisan Brigade. Since the local population in Latvia would not support Soviet partisans, they could not gain a foothold. From January 1943 the Red Partisans in Latvia were directly subordinated to the central headquarters in Moscow under the leadership of Arturs Spragas. Another prominent commander was Vila Samsons, who later became a historian. Altogether Latvia had 24 partisan units, together with 33 smaller groups. From March 1944 until July they formed four partisan brigades, 1st Brigade with about 3,000 men Commander v. Samson's fought in northern and northeastern Latvia, 2nd Brigade about 1,500 men, Commander P. Ratton's fought in the center of Latvia, 3rd Brigade about 500 men, Commander Otomars Oskalns fought at Zemgale, along with the 4th Brigade, also with about 500 men. The Leningrad Partisan Brigade, which consisted only of Russians Commander M. Klementiev fought around Lake Lubens. In 1944 and 1945 in Courland they formed many partisan units 2 to 12 men each which, though small, were very active. Most noted was, Sarkana Bolta. The Latvian Red Partisans suffered great losses, and many from smaller groups were completely eliminated. The Red Partisan movement in Latvia ended in October 1944. The Latvian commander of the pro-Soviet units was Arturs Spragas. However, Moscow failed to create pro-Soviet units on a large scale in 1941–1942. In the beginning of 1944 Spragas reported to Moscow that only 1,500 Soviet partisans had been transferred to Latvia. Because of lack of local support for Soviet partisan units, they were based in woods in Belarus and Russia and only made raids into Latvia, afterwards retreating to their bases across the border. After World War II After the end of World War II, resistance continued against the Soviet regime. From 1945 to 1956, around 40,000 were involved in the National Partisan Resistance Movement. In the 1990s, the former Soviet partisan Vasily Kononov was accused of war crimes. See also Anti-fascism Estonian anti-German resistance movement 1941–44 Latvian independence movement Resistance during World War II Resistance movement Lithuanian resistance during World War II References External links Legenda, Kas nak no Jelgavas Saviors and the Saved The Savers War after War <laughs>